first move, we're going to call this the 3B Weave. And this is actually from something called Toy. Um, you'll see a lot of chuckers do this. Matter of fact, when you see double chuckers, uh, a lot of the videos, you'll notice that this is pretty much all they do. <laughs> they'll add some strikes, they'll add some bounce patterns, and then they'll, you're giving me really fast. Yeah. They'll add some clutches, clutch, 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 clutch. And then they might do some bounces. Do, 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 do. And then they're back to their three beat weaves again. I'm going to show you how to do a three beat weave. I'm going to stand with my right hand's going to lead this battle. And it's going to swing. My right hand's going to move counterclockwise, like so. Now, if you remember it, when you're only using one chuck, the figure eight is a very simple move. It's like this. Boom, boom, right? A three beat weave is something like a figure eight, except for we add an extra circle. That's why they call it three beats, because you're actually making three circles as it crosses each time. Mm -hmm. I have a spider on my wall. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, uh, it, it creates three circles. So, I, oh my god, he's back. Hold on. And this is what we're going to work on. This is not an easy move to start with. But it is the core move for most double nunchucks. So what we're going to do is our right hand is going to go counterclockwise. And it's going to swing across to our left side, like so. Okay? So this is going to take some practice, so just practice this part. Swing across, like so. Now remember, we're going to think in terms of a clock, okay? Right now, I'm not going to go very fast. Remember, this is 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. So my right hand swinging. Whoosh! It's just like the figure eight. We're down below here. Now, my right hand's going to carry itself up to 12 o'clock, and this is going to start the circle. Essentially, what's going to happen is, is every time that my right hand moves, my left hand is also going to follow and across that same thing. Think of it like a clock, for instance. If my right hand's at 12, left hand should be at 6. And as it goes across, they should be fairly parallel towards each other. This is what's going to create the symmetry, of course, which is going to create the circles, as you can see. So my right hand's going to slash across. See, it's going to cross my left, slash across, and then it's going to lift up to about 12 o'clock. So it's rotating now, right? It's getting rotation. Once we hit about 12 o'clock, my left and my right hands are going to move together. Boom. So now we're at 9 and 3, 12 and 6. Now watch what happens. This hand is going to slash across to the other side, whoosh, like so. And this hand is going to follow. It's going to follow very slowly. So, again, we're swinging, we cross our body, both are down low right now. This pulls up to about 12 o'clock and then the rotations start. Boom. Boom. This comes across to the other side now, and this is going to follow it underneath, and now our arm is going to unwind. So this is going to come up, now this is going the opposite direction. Now notice I'm not going very fast yet, and notice also, as one hand moves, the other one moves in the opposite direction. So I'm going to 12 o'clock, I'm, I'm talking about my left hand now, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock, now my right hand's taking over, Shoom, and it's going to swing all the way over, and the left hand's going to follow it, and then we're going to do the exact same thing that we did before. We're rotating again, this direction, and once we hit 12 o'clock, our hands are going to move over. It's really tricky, like I tried to break that down as much as possible into a crosswords motion, but essentially, the most important thing, I think what happens where most people mess up is, is they chase it. So as soon as my right arm swings over here, both of their hands are moving at the same time, and you can't have that to happen. That's why you want to do it really slowly. You swing it over, and then you kind of give it a little bit of a lift until both parts are like uh, opposite ends of the clock. And then the clock winds until you are just about ready to be done where you, you can't wind much more, and then it crosses. And then it unwinds exactly in the same way. Boom, 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 and it's starting to cross over, and then this will follow, and then it's going to wind again. Always remember, if you think about a clock, no matter how your hands are moving, they're almost always on opposite ends. That's the best way to think about this. So think about a figure eight, as you're doing your figure eight, and then all of a sudden, add your other hand in with that figure eight, 
And now go very slowly as this comes down. This isn't ready yet because both hands are in the same place. We need to wait until they're in opposite ends. Boom, not yet. Okay, now they're in opposite ends. Boom, boom. This is going to start slashing across. Okay, we can start here. If you follow the clock, it's perfectly okay. As long as you're, again, at opposite ends, we can wind it all the way over here. Just remember, we have to eventually carry it over. In fast motion, it looks like this. 